evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, Star Rider 124. I'm Rocco, world famous open magician, and this is my best friend Willie. Got it in. <laughs> oh, Star Rider. Right out of the way. It sure is great to be back with you again. What a great looking bunch is here tonight. Wow, you know, Rocco, I can't believe it's been a year since our last show. Yeah, Rocco, uh, well, we only do the Star Riders, and, uh, not much call for pumpkin magicians this time of year. You may not be getting many calls, Spark Blood, but my phone was ringing off the hook. Ah, uh, come on, Willie. Uh, when I put you in the box, you don't come out of there for 11 months. There's no phone in there. You didn't tell them about our U.S. tour this year? <laughs> no, I didn't. You didn't tell them we played Broadway or Carnegie Hall? No, I didn't. Oh, truth time tonight, eh, Wayne Duck? Yeah, truth time, Willie. Can you handle the truth? Oh, I can handle the truth, Chris Pitt. The question is, can these people handle the truth? Now, Willie, be nice. We don't want to pick on people. Speak for yourself, Lowrider. I don't want to pick on somebody. I can't help myself. Be nice, Willie. Damn it, Crankshaft. Listen up, people. I'm sorry about Rocco being such a wimp. I say, let's get this party started. First, there was that election last month. You hear about it? It's a fur under my saddle that I just got to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's over, really. Forget about it. Oh, I got no beef about the results, so punk. My beef is, with all the dummies and puppets I saw trying to get elected, I can't believe we weren't on a ballot. Willie, it's over. Just let it go, okay? I promise I won't go on about it, yes, Ken. But we got as many brain cells as they do, and we're real dummies. Willie, there's only one dummy here. Keep talking, Einstein. That way I won't have to say anything to prove you wrong. <laughs> okay, Willie. Let's go on. All right, Bob Light. Well, since I can't talk about those other elections, how about I mention our own elections? We have a new club president for next year, Ken Ellickson, and a new vice president, Steve Anderjack. We congratulate them both. Let's also thank Mike Griswold for his faithful service as our club president for two years. Well said, Willie. Yeah, touching, wasn't it? I can't be up here and not say something about those cobwebs hanging around Mike's chin. <laughs> Looks like a snowball with licks. Wow, fresh boy, winner. Willie, come on, be nice. Yeah, yeah, here, man. Here's a story about Mike that only a few people have heard. Is this going to be true? Mike took his bike to a friend's house to change his rear tire. His friend said he couldn't get to it for a while, so Mike said he didn't live far and would just walk home. On the way home, he stopped at the hardware store and bought a bucket and a large hammer. He stopped at a small pet store and bought an adorable puppy and two kittens. Now Mike had a problem. How to carry all this stuff home? That's a problem. Pipe down, Banjo Duck, and let me tell the story. While Mike was scratching his head, he was approached by a little old lady who said she was lost. She asked, can you tell me how to get to 255 Rose Lane? Mike said, well, as a matter of fact, I live just one street past there. I would walk you home, but I can't carry all this stuff. The old lady suggested, why don't you put the hammer in the bucket, carry the bucket in one hand, put a kitten under each arm, and carry the puppy in the other hand. Why, thank you very much, Mike said, and he proceeded to walk the old girl home. On the way, Mike said, let's take my shortcut and go down this alley. We'll be there in half the time. The old lady looked him over cautiously, then said, I'm a lonely widow without a husband to defend me. How do I know when we get in that alley, you won't hold me up against the wall and ravish me? Mike said, holy smoke, lady. I'm carrying a bucket, a hammer, two kittens, and a puppy. How in the world could I possibly do that? The lady replied, set the puppy down, cover him with the bucket, put the hammer on top of the bucket, and I'll hold the kitten. Oh, Willie, show some respect, please. No dice, mousetrap. 
check out Ken, will ya? He's the one that got us into Murray's for this party. Did you know that, Rocco? Yeah, I know that. Yeah? Well, check this out, BK. Ken booked us into Judy's, or so he thought. He booked him with a guy named Guido, who also sold him a genuine Rolex for 20 bucks. Ken said the booking fell through, but the watch only loses three minutes a day. Uh, Willie, that was just a confluence of contradictory circumstances. Confluence of contradictory circumstances? Rocco, what are you smoking? Come on, I just meant that it's no fault of Ken's how that was handled. You should have just said that, that old brat. I should also mention something that happened to Ken in California this year. Is this another true story? Get over it, old Rick. This is what Ken told me. He said he was riding along a California beach when suddenly the sky opened above his head and in a booming voice the Lord said, Ken, because you've tried to be faithful to me in all ways, I will grant you one wish. Ken saw God? Yes, Wombat. He saw God. Ken said he pulled over, stunned by the sight of God, but at the same time thinking, oh, what the hell? And he said, build a bridge to Hawaii so I can ride over anytime I want. The Lord said, your request is materialistic. Think of the enormous challenges for that kind of undertaking. It will nearly exhaust several natural resources. I can do it, but it is hard for me to justify a desire for worldly things. Take a little more time and think of some of the things that would honor and glorify me. Ken thought about it for some time. Finally, he said, Lord, I wish I could understand that Deborah. I want to know how she feels, what she's thinking. What she means when she says nothing is wrong and gives me the silent treatment. Why she cries and how can I make a woman truly happy? The Lord thought a moment then replied, You want two lanes or four? <laughs> no, really, that's not true. Doesn't matter, Frank Case, I'm cruising now. Wow, Steve is out there too. This year he was like a GI. Like those GIs you see in World War II movies, marching across Europe, giving out chocolate and nylons to get favors. I didn't get chocolates. Right, Paul, right, you took the nylons. Oh yeah, that's right. Don't know what favor you get, though. Oh, you're crude and merciless. You're starting to understand all that now, eh, Buckbag? <laughs> Look, Mark Szynski's here. He's our new sergeant at arms. He had a tough year, old Mark did. He's been recovered from his accident last year, and then his bike started giving him trouble. When I asked him what was wrong with it, he said, it made a clink or a thunk sound, and then when I cranked it, it made a th sound. I thought he was reading some of Bob Grove's old message board post. Come on now. Mike showed, or Mark showed great perseverance, and he got that bike running after all. Yeah, salute to Mark for keeping the bike on the road and running. Rocco, am I having deja vu or is Patrick Vallecki sporting a sling again this year? Yeah, just imagine that. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> Patrick is like the story of Moses. Just one plague after another. The way he works with motorcycles and riders, he could be a star in Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> oh, come on, well, don't pick on other people's misfortunes now. Okay, that's not. You know, Rondo, I see Cajun and Leah here tonight. Shall I tell you a story about those two? Only if it's true. Oh, it's a true story. I don't need to make stuff up with this crowd. Okay, well. We all know how Cajun moves around these days. Bit of a struggle sometimes. Well, we had a ride one time. I could get some ice cream in an old ice cream parlor near Buford. Cajun shuffled slowly into the ice cream parlor and pulled himself slowly, painfully, up onto a stool. After catching his breath, he ordered a banana split. The waitress kindly asked him, Crushed nuts, sir? No, he replied, arthritis. <laughs> oh, really? That's not a true story. Okay, okay. Here's a story about me that I know you'll enjoy. 
One Sunday, Lee walked into church and sat down in the very front row. As the preacher was beginning his sermon, the devil suddenly appeared at the altar. The members of the congregation, including the preacher himself, fled the church in terror, all except for Lee in the front row. The devil noticed Lee still in the church and walked down from the altar to confront her. He roared at her, Do you know who I am? Why, of course I know who you are, Lee calmly replied. You're sick. And you're not afraid of me like the others? To which Lee replied, No, why should I be? I've been married to your brother for the last 20 years. <laughs> All right, well, come on. That's no true story either. So what, uh, knucklehead? That was fun. Hey, people, I got a story about Rocco. You need to hear it. A story about me? Yeah, you, Clutch Blake. I was there when you had the neighbors over for drinks last month. After eating, the wife left the table and went into the kitchen. Rocco and the other guy were talking, and Rocco says, Last night, we went out to a new restaurant, and it was really great. I recommend it very highly. The other man said, What was the name of the restaurant? Rocco thought and thought, finally said, Well, what is it that uh, lawyers do to get money for their clients? And then the other guy said, You mean Sue? Yeah, that's it. Rocco turned toward the kitchen and yelled, Sue, what's the name of that restaurant we went to last night? Woo, me! CRS. True hurts, don't it? Put that. Yeah, yeah, not funny though. Hang on, Rocco. Incoming. Uh oh, are we A little girl is playing in her front yard, but she hears a loud rumbling. She calls into the house. Daddy, some guys on motorcycles are coming down the street. Her father calls back, I think you should come in the house. She looks back toward the bikers and again calls into the house. Daddy, they're riding Harley Davidson's. The father shouts back, you better bring the dog too. I hope that's the last one. And one more. Well, these two trailer trash women were talking to each other and one asked, how is your husband doing? And the other one said, I think he's dead. So the first one asked, what do you mean, you think he's dead? So the second one replied, well, the sex is the same, but he hasn't worked on the Harley in over a week. All right, two Harley Davidson jokes, go boom. All right, what else you got, Willie? Not even close, Tailpipe. Did you hear about Obama and the cows? Obama and the cows? That's right, Sophie French, Obama and the cows. Last week, President Obama was walking three cows into the White House. A Marine guard snapped to attention, saluted and said, Nice cows, sir. The President replied, These are not just any cows. These are Black Angus cows from Ireland. I got one for Michelle, one for Sasha, and one for Malia. The Marine again snapped to attention, saluted and replied, Nice trade, sir. <laughs> Oh, really? You'll pick on anybody. It ain't my fault, pal, Sam. You're the puppet magician here. I'm losing control. That's okay, Paul. You're doing just fine. You know, it wouldn't be right if I didn't tell you all a story about Reggie. Reggie's a good man. He's going to open up a Starlighter chapter in Orangeburg. Don't get your chaps in a twist, Rocco. This is a good Reggie story. A man was struck by a bus on Huge Street. He's lying near death on the sidewalk and a crowd began to gather. He asked for a Catholic priest to give him last rites. A priest, please, a priest, a Catholic priest, please, he gasped. A policeman on the scene turns to the crowd and yells, is there a priest here? A priest, please, a priest. No one answered. Then out of the crowd stepped Reggie. Excuse me, officer, said Reggie. I'm not a priest. I'm not even Catholic. But for 20 years, I lived behind the Catholic Church on First Avenue. And every week, I could hear their services. I recall a lot of it, and maybe I could be of some comfort to this man. The policeman agreed and cleared the crowd away so that Reggie could get through to where the injured man lay. A hush fell on the crowd. Reggie knelt down, leaned over the dying man, and said in a solemn voice, B4, I-19, <laughs> 38. Oh, 
Thank you. The floor is yours. <laughs> 